So you have a dental exam coming up, or maybe you're looking to schedule one. Let's talk about what goes down when you come in for an exam on today's episode of Floss Up. Floss it up, floss it up, floss it up, floss it, floss it up, floss it up, floss it up, floss it, floss it up, floss it up, floss it up, floss it. If you don't floss every day, you bound to get decay. Floss up. I'm Dr. Gibbs. Welcome back to episode number two. Today, we're going to be talking about the two main types of dental exams that you may encounter. The first exam is called a comprehensive exam. Exam number two is called a recall or periodic exam. Let's go into more detail. Exam number one, a comprehensive exam. A comprehensive exam is specifically designed for patients who have not been to this dental office before. If it is your first time to this dentist, you are considered a new patient, they are more inclined to do something called a comprehensive exam. Also, a comprehensive exam applies if maybe you have been to this dentist, but it's been more than five years since your most recent appointment. Now, what exactly is a comprehensive exam? I'm going to give you my perspective based on my experiences with our patients at our clinic. Every office is going to be a little bit different, but should be relatively the same. So you walk into the office and you're greeted by a lovely front office staff. You'll check in and they'll hand you a packet of paperwork. This packet of paperwork will contain questions about your medical history, your contact information, as well as your medications list, amongst a few other things. Please take your time to fill this information out as accurately as possible. It is extremely important for us to know who you are medically and the medications that you are taking. This helps us create a plan that is custom fit for you and your medical history and the medications that you are taking. So please take your time and fill this information out as accurately as possible. If there are any questions about this paperwork, please do not hesitate to ask the lovely front office staff. They'll be happy to help. Once you are done, you'll walk up to the front office, give them your packet and you're considered ready to go. The assistant will then call your name, bring you back and he or she may take you to the operatory room or take you to a machine where we will obtain an image called a Panorex or a panel. Now, when you walk up to the panel machine, it's gonna be a little intimidating, a little scary, but don't be afraid. You're just gonna walk up to the machine, you bite on this little plastic piece, and this machine is just gonna spin around your head. And it's gonna produce an image that looks pretty cool, and it looks like this. So make sure to ask them to look at your panel image after they take it. I, I think they're pretty cool. Next, you're gonna follow the assistant to the operatory room where the exam is gonna take place. But before the exam starts, the assistant's gonna ensure that your medications and your medical history is loaded properly into the computer so that the doctor has it and so that it's there to access for future visits. This is a great time to ask any questions about the questionnaire form for your medical history or medications list. And something that's really helpful is before you come in, if you can make a list of all the medications that you're taking, just read it right off of the bottle, write it down. It makes it very easy for you to recite all of the medications, the dosage, how often you're taking it, and potentially what you're taking it for. This helps us out and it helps you out as well. Once the assistant is done gathering that information and making sure that it's correctly implemented into the computer, she or he will get your blood pressure. Your blood pressure is extremely important for us to monitor. It affects your treatment. We'll talk about that in a later video. Next, the assistant is gonna capture something called an FMX, a full mouth series of x-rays. There are a total of 18 images that we will be taking, which is considered a full mouth series of x-rays. Now, this is what a full mouth series of x-rays look like. It is composed of four bite wing images, which look like this, and this, image helps us see your bone level. It also helps us see the crowns, which are the portion of the teeth that you can actually see inside of the mouth. And we're able to look in between the teeth to assess cavities from patients who don't actually floss. So make sure you're flossing because we'll be able to see it from these bite wing images. Next, after the bite wing images, we take something called the periapical images, which looks like this. The periapical images help us assess potential fractures in the roots, they help us see if there's any infections brewing where the bone and the root meet together or anything else that looks abnormal. This helps us give the total picture of each individual tooth. Not only can we see the crown from the bite wings, but we can also see the root of each individual tooth that we take. Whatever we can't see from this FMX, we refer to our pano to see. This is extremely helpful for wisdom teeth because they're so far back there, it's really hard for us to get periapical or bite wing x-rays of the wisdom teeth that are there. That's where the panel helps out. 
Next, either the dentist or the hygienist will come in and conduct something called the periodontal exam. They will use an instrument called a periodontal probe, which looks like this, and they'll use this periodontal probe to place it in between where your gums and your teeth meet to obtain a measurement, and it looks somewhat like this. After they obtain the measurement, you'll hear them call out a number, 323, 333, 343. These are just measurements that they're getting as they work their way with this probe around each individual tooth. Once that is done, we will also assess recession, which is where your gums have receded or gone down away from where they're supposed to be. And we also notate mobility if your teeth are mobile. All this information gets put into your periodontal chart. This information is extremely important and creates a baseline for us to kind of come back to. It's a reference point. So that let's say in a future appointment, you have your periodontal readings done again. We can use that and compare it to how it was before to see if there were any improvements or if it's not been improved. Then we can modify the plan or see what's going on at home to help you reach those goals that we want to help you reach. After the periodontal exam is done, the dentist will come in and conduct their clinical exam. The dentist will usually start off with doing something called an extra oral exam. An extra oral exam is where the dentist will palpate and feel underneath your chin, behind your head, for any tender muscles or any swollen lymph nodes. They will also look at your face for any asymmetry. So let's say you have a swelling on this side, but this side looks normal. They'll look for those things. Another thing that we look at is skin cancer lesion. Once the extra oral exam is done, we do the intra oral exam. The intraoral exam typically starts off with an oral cancer screening. Oral cancer will tend to show its first signs on the back side of your tongue, so that's typically where we start looking. Once the oral cancer screening is done, we will start by looking at each individual tooth one by one, and we'll match it with what we see on the x-ray from the FMX and from the pano. The x-ray information, as well as our visual clinical exam, give us the total picture of the tooth. This allows us to accurately diagnose the tooth, and create a plan for it to fix it if there's something wrong with it. After we go tooth by tooth by tooth, we'll sit you up and we discuss our findings with you. Once we discuss our findings with you, this is the opportunity for you and the dentist to come up with a plan that you both agree upon to move forward for your treatment. This is something that's called a treatment plan. It's extremely important for you to understand what goes down in your treatment plan. You need to understand the ins and outs of your treatment plan, what's happening in each appointment, how much everything costs, what material is being used, and you need to make sure that you voice your concerns if you do not understand something. So please take the time to review your treatment plans and ask any questions that you may have. Once the treatment plan is complete and set, you will check out with the front office staff. They'll give you a copy of your treatment plan and off you go. Next, your appointment will be based off of your treatment plan. You'll kind of go one by one by one and knock things out until the whole entire treatment plan is done. Now, sometimes things in the treatment plan may change. Let's say you broke a tooth because you bit on an olive or something. Now, instead of this tooth needing only two areas to be worked on, there's an extra third area that needs to be worked on because you fractured it off when you bit on that olive pit. That's just an example of how the treatment plan can change. But you will be made aware before we do anything that's different than what the treatment plan states. Next, after you've completed your treatment plan, you will be placed on a recall exam list, meaning that a year later, you will come in for what's called a recall or a periodic exam. A recall or periodic exam is where you come in once every year. You basically just have a mini comprehensive exam. We don't take the full FMX 18 series of x-rays. We don't take a pano. We typically take four bite wings, that's it. And a bite wing, if you don't remember, looks like this. That's to assess if you have what? Cavities, exactly. So we're gonna assess to see if there's been any new cavities that have been created from when we saw you last year versus when we're seeing you now for your recall exam. We also do your periodontal readings and compare it to the baseline or to the previous exam for your comprehensive exam, let's say, for example. And then once that's done, you're all set. We'll see you the following year. Unless you have something new that is developed, then we will create a new treatment plan with the new findings and the new recommended plan for you. You'll carry that out and continue on every year with your recall exam. And that's it. Those are the two examples of exams that you may encounter. One, a comprehensive exam for new patients or patients who haven't been to the dentist in more than five years. Or two, a recall exam that you typically will have once every year. 
I hope this information was helpful. The goal of my channel is to help you feel more confident and comfortable the next time you step into the dental office. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me directly or just simply comment below. Also, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe so we can get the information out there and so that I know I got people who are actually listening to me and hear me out. Thank you so much for your time. Floss it up. 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 Floss it up.